These 3D puzzles look incredible, but they must be so hard to make, right? Well, what if I told you there was a free program that could take any SDL and turn it into one of these? This slot together 3D printed Valentine's Day heart I created for an early video on the channel using the now defunct program 123D Make. Fortunately, there's a new program replacing that one from Autodesk and it's called Slice of Fusion. Don't be misled by the name, you can use it as a standalone, you don't need to be a Fusion 360 user. I've been experimenting with this program a great deal to make all sorts of things. One of the best things about it is that you can use it for 3D printing, laser cutting or CNC machining. In this video, I'm going to step you through all the different modes and teach you how to use it so you can make your own great 3D puzzles. Let's get started. So here we are in Slicer for Fusion 360 and you'll get these quick tips the first time that you run it. You can skim through and have a look at those. It's got camera controls, it's got some general things about the program, but we're going to get straight into it. First thing we're going to do is to import some STL geometry. So I'm loading up a simple sphere here because I think it's the best way to show off how to use this program. After you understand the basics, that's the ideal time to venture into something more complicated. First thing we need to do, regardless of our manufacturing method, is to set up our manufacturing settings. So we're going to click the little pencil here. You can see I've set up some presets for different machines. Let me talk you through them. I've got one set up for the Ender 3, and when you're 3D printing, you're going to match the length and width of your bed. The thickness is up to you. And this one down the bottom here for 3D printing needs to be set to zero because there is no material lost when you're cutting, as in laser cutting or CNC. Here I've set one up for my Emblazer 1 laser cutter, so I've matched the cutting area size. The thickness will need to match the material. Quite often I use cardboard or core flute, both of which are 3mm. Tool diameter for the laser is zero, but there is a tiny little bit of width that comes out of that. So I'm going to put in a slot offset of 0.1. Next we have a 6040 Chinese CNC router. I've got my length and width as the working cutting area of that and the thickness is my thickness of material. Now three millimeters here will be no good because my tool diameter is wider than that. So it's gonna be very hard to slot in three millimeter worth of material tightly into something that's 3.1. Therefore, I need to up this to at least that size. So I would need to use something like four millimeter acrylic. Now my CNC is quite accurate, so I'm quite happy to leave my slot offset as zero. And my tool diameter needs to match my cutter for me, that's 1 8 inch cutter, and that's 3.175 millimeters. Finally, I have another 3D printer profile, Tivo Tornado, 300 by 300. I'll keep my thickness at three, and I'm just gonna put that slot offset once again to zero. My previous testing has told me leaving it at zero has a nice tight fit. Once those are in, we still need to select them from here, so I'm gonna do one of the 3D printer ones. Now that we've set up our machine, it's time to set up our size. I'm going to change mine to millimeters and it will scale things up for you automatically but if you want the original size you need to click this one here if you do want to scale it up simply unclick it and then put in your desired size i'm going to go for 100. okay we're ready to do the fun part and that is picking a construction technique i'll run you through each one but i'll focus on what i think is more useful for most people's applications the first one we're going to look at is folded panels, and this one is for origami. As you can see, it is dividing this into sections and unfolding those so you could probably laser cut or maybe plasma cut into sheet metal and then fold them all back together to build up your 3D shape. Stack slices is definitely something I have used. It's a great way to make a big solid object out of flat panels that are either laser cut or CNC machined. You can see because it's for those two techniques that the sides are in fact flat and you'll have this stepped appearance here. You might need to make it oversized and then sand it down if you want it smooth. A similar variation on that is 3D slices. Now this time it has divided it into these slices but it's kept each piece smooth. It's matched the original contours of the geometry and that's much better for 3D printing. If I come back to my manufacturing settings and I change my thickness to something a lot bigger for instance, 40 millimeters. You can see it splits it into 40 millimeter pieces. This might be a really fast way to divide an object into smaller pieces to fit on your 3D printer. Now for either of these versions where it does the pieces, you can change your slice direction. Simply click on one of the rings and then drag this here. So if I was to do it 90 degrees, therefore it's gonna slice it vertically instead of horizontally along the Z axis. 
Now, in my opinion, the most useful ones are these three in the middle, and we're gonna start with interlock slices. Now, as you can see, it's divided everything into half and the two things slot together from opposite sides. It's gonna lay out all of the parts to fit inside whatever volume you've set up. So for me, that's 220 by 220 for the end of three in this case. If you wanna have a better idea of how it goes together, you can come to assembly steps and then put the slider the whole way to the left. Now, when we click one at a time, it'll tell us how it's gonna be assembled when the object is complete. Now you notice here on this simple shape, there are no errors, nothing is red. If you ever get something red, you need to zoom in and sometimes you'll find that something is disconnected or if you still can't see anything, it might be that the error will come when you're assembling it. It might be requiring you to slot something from the side when there's already another piece in the way. So it can be subtle, but generally that's gonna be what the issue is. Now for any of these techniques, additional options are gonna come up from the side. So once again, we have our slice direction. You click on which axis you wanna alter and then you slide it to the side. You can see now we're cutting on a 45 degree angle. For a sphere, it doesn't really make much difference, but that could be vital in getting it to work for other types of geometry. Probably the best one to play with here is slice distribution. So we can alter how many segments in each direction are making up this shape. So you can set it by count, and then we can lower or raise that however we want it to look in the end. You can see here these ones have turned blue because they're disconnected. Therefore, you need to edit the model if you want them to be included. Should be pretty simple to do by putting this one up to three, and now we have one going through the middle, and everything is gonna to slot together nicely. You can also set it to custom, and that will allow you to actually drag these wherever you want. So you have a tricky part of geometry, you can click on the shape, and then drag it up or down, and you can see in real time on the side, it's changing all of the slots. So maybe you had something where you had ears coming out here, and if you had it too far above or below, the ears weren't actually gonna intersect the slot together. You can manually move this, and that's a very powerful feature. Now, a couple more things you might be wondering about are the notch factor and notch angle. It's really hard to see here, but it puts a little 45 degree chamfer on the edge here. If we up this to a bigger number, let's come all the way up to one millimeter. Now when we inspect our part, we can see it's a lot more obvious. Depending on your material, that will make it easier to assemble. Now this last one here, we only need to worry about if we're using a CNC router. If we zoom in on one of these shapes, we can see that it's leaving a square edge on the inside, but a CNC router uses a round rotating bit, so it's gonna leave a radius here and here. Therefore, if we don't compensate for that, the pieces will never fully slot together. So I'm gonna come up and select my 6040. And then I'm gonna change my relief style to dog bone. And now when we click on it, we can see it's gonna widen it at the bottom and that will allow the pieces to completely slot in. And they'll still rest on here so they're at the correct location when they're all assembled. That's interlock slices. Let's have a look at the last couple. Radial slices I really like. It makes for really strong things. Interlock ones can tend to slide apart depending on how you've constructed them. Radial from one direction will come out from the center and the other direction will just be straight horizontal pieces. If we look at the assembly steps, we'll see that they're gonna slot in one at a time from the outside. And that makes some really cool looking objects. Generally, the program is very good getting the length on these just right so they don't quite collide here. Everything will butt up against each other perfectly. Of course, you can change your slice distribution. You can even try something like by distance where you put in the gap between them now our last one is the most complicated. It's similar to the previous two we've looked at and it's called curve. So at first glance, you can see the parts here have a curve and we can edit that curve by coming to our slice direction. You can see a spline through the middle here. So if we click on this spline, we should be able to modify where it cuts through. And if I move it the wrong way, I have all these red bits where it's impossible to cut because things are overlapping and becoming segmented. According to the instructions, this is best for something like an animal, say a brontosaurus, where it's got a long curved spine and you might drag the curve to match that so the pieces can slot in and retain the form as good as possible. Well, that speed taught us the basics, but it's not very practical. We're gonna look at a 3D Benchy and look at some of the options available in the program to change the geometry to get the process to work. So I'm gonna load up a 3D Benchy and it's important to note that you don't necessarily want it to change the up axis of the mesh. You want to leave that at Z if it was correctly orientated before you imported. So here's our Benchy, and this is difficult geometry because it's mostly hollow. 
and that gives us a great chance to show how to use one of the other features here. If we come to modify form, we have three options down here. So I might try something like shrink wrapping the benchy and I'll do the slider up and then click apply. And that is gonna fill in some of those gaps. See how it becomes a lot more solid, a lot more printable. And if I wanna see what it's done to the model, I can hit the eyeball up the very top and it's fattened it up nicely, therefore removing the difficult sections from having all of those gaps. Other ones you might like to try are hollow, and this will let you hollow something out to reduce the amount of material that you're using. Thicken is similar, but works in the opposite way to shrink wrap. If you've got something with really delicate features, you can thicken them up and therefore have more meat to be able to connect to the different pieces between if you're getting a lot of these errors in red. Now sometimes things will be red and you just can't work out why and it's actually quite obvious and that's that they're too big to fit on the printer bed or the surface you have specified. Only way around that is to scale things down. Alright, finally got it. We're ready to export. So if you are laser cutting, you want to come down to get plans and then select your format, DXF, something like that. And then you export and you'll get a zip file full of all of your different pages. If you're going it for 3D printing or CNC routing, you need to come up to this menu here and say export mesh. And when you give it a name, you can hit save. And once again, you'll have a zip file full of all the SDL pieces. Now I understand there's a lot to take in in this video and fortunately there's a really good help PDF that you access by going to the help menu. It documents and explains what every setting is in the program. So if you're curious about something, simply search for it in that document and you should hopefully be able to find exactly what you're looking for. For this video, I decided to make a space shuttle orbiter to satisfy my son's intense curiosity of all things space. This space shuttle orbiter is linked on Thingiverse. I managed to slice it at about 0.95 thickness and that fits it inside one plate for the end of three, 220 by 220. After it was printed, I peeled everything off and rather than using the instructions, I treated it actually like a puzzle. My son was happy to help a little bit, but mainly he was just happy to watch and see this creation take place. At this tiny scale, the pieces were actually too tight. So as I mentioned earlier in the video, the slot offset is the value you need to do here. So instead of being zero, it probably should have been about 0.1 or 0.2. Nonetheless, it went together and my son gave it his seal of approval by launching it into space while sitting at the kitchen table. Pretty neat, huh? I mean, it's not perfect. It's a little bit tight in slotting together, so the shape is a little bit distorted, but fortunately, five-year-olds don't notice any of those type of things. Now, I mentioned earlier some other examples I've done with laser cutting. Let's have a quick look at those. This car was sliced using interlocking slices and shows the potential for then forming a skin over something to make it lightweight, but still strong. It was cut from 3mm black core flute on a laser cutter, as were these two Totoro interlocking puzzles based on the radial slice method. It's amazing how recognizable the shape is, even in this form. 3mm cardboard, laser cut in a radial pattern as seen on this rubber ducky, slots together incredibly well. Of all of the models I've created with this software, this cardboard rubber ducky is definitely my favorite. It slots together really nicely, it's got a nice tactile feel, and with the radial pattern that I used, it looks really cool as well. Hopefully you've picked up something new here and you can see this program has some merit. It's completely free, so why not follow the link in the description to download it. If you give it a go, or if you've given it a go before, please comment, tell me what you thought of it. Can you see any applications in the future where you can use this great piece of software? That's going to wrap it up for this one. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, happy 3D printing, laser cutting, and CNC routing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.